We're going to wrap up the integer operations with multiplying and dividing integers. And I like to say that we save the, the, the best for last because really, if you have survived adding and subtracting integers, multiplying and dividing integers is cake. Let's think back to how you originally learned multiplication. When you were given something like 3 times 2, you probably had it explained to you that it's like having 3 groups of 2. Or it's 2 rows of 3. Either way, you learn to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Let's put this in integer world. 3 times negative 2. Same principle, we have 1, 2, 3 groups of negative 2. And if you think back to when we use counters and adding integers, if you look at it, there's nothing to cancel out. So I count my counters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The answer is negative 6. Let's see how this works with dividing. Dividing in its most basic form means to split things up into even groups. So let's take negative 20 and let's split that up into four groups. Right there are 20 negative counters. If you want to pause the video and count all those, be my guest, but just take my word for it that there's 20 negative counters. So four groups, one, two, three, four. In those four groups, there are one, two, three, four, five negative counters. Therefore, negative 20 divided by positive 4 is negative 5. So we can easily see how this works when you have different signs. We can see we know positives and positives. You've been doing that since elementary school. We can prove different signs if you mix a positive and a negative and it applies with multiplying and dividing. The tricky part is going to come in when they're both negative. What do you do with that? Because I can't really think of a way to model a negative group. We're going to think about this in the form of a pattern. So I've started you off with negative 3 times positive 2. We've already proven that that's negative 6. Now think back again to when you first learned multiplication. You learned it as repeated addition. And if you couldn't think of a certain multiplication table, you just added or subtracted down to get to the next multiplication fact. Negative 3 times 1. Well, even if you don't know much about integers, you know the identity property of multiplication says that if you multiply anything times 1, positive or negative, anything times 1, you're going to get that number. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Okay, well, what about negative 3 times 0? Hey, I don't have to know about integers for that either because I know this one's easy. Anything times zero is zero. Okay, so let's see if we can find a pattern. What is the change between these? We're looking for the pattern, and remember, it's repeated at addition with multiplication. To go from negative six to negative three, I add three. To go from negative three to a positive, I'm sorry, to a zero, I add three. So to continue that pattern, I'm just going to add 3 each time. What is 0 plus 3? Well, that's 3. Therefore, negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3, which makes sense. A 3 and a 1 gives me a 3. Okay, what about negative 3 times negative 2? Well, I'm going to add 3 again because multiplication is repeated addition. 3 plus 3 is 6. Therefore, negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. Follow the pattern, add 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. Are you starting to see it? When I have those different signs, I have a negative answer. When I have the same signs, it gives me a positive. So that's the basis of your rule for multiplying and dividing integers. Whoa! <laughs> it's kind of nice that you have the same rule for two different operations. I only have to remember one set of rules for multiplication and division. I told you it was easier. So if you have the same signs that you're putting together, your answer is going to be positive. 
Anytime I'm multiplying or dividing, if I have two positives, I'm going to have a positive. If I have two negatives, my answer is positive. If I have different signs, if I'm multiplying a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, if I'm dividing a negative and a positive, or a positive and a negative, my answer is going to be negative. So you just multiply or divide like normal, and then based on what signs your factors were, different signs is negative, same signs are positive. So let's practice this a little bit. You know the drill. You take a stab at it, pause the video, and then restart the video to see how you compare with what I did. Let's see how you did. 48 divided by negative 6. Well, they have different signs, so my answer is negative, and 48 divided by 6 is 8. So my answer is negative 8. Question B, negative 2 times negative 12. Multiply those numbers. 2 times 12 is 24. They have the same sign, so my answer is a positive 24. Now for the... C question, you probably looked at it and said, oh, I don't know if I can do something like that, but I like to back things up to make sure you still remember all that order of operations stuff. Well, order of operations tells me to start in the parentheses. I underline that set of parentheses. People get kind of scared when they see lots of grouping symbols, but if, when you got to looking at it, you probably saw only one set of parentheses really serve the purpose of grouping. The rest of it is to keep that negative sign kind of attached to the number. So, negative 6 divided by negative 2. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and a negative divided by a negative, they have the same sign, so it's positive. I brought that 3 down, and then I copied down the rest of it. And I tried to keep it color-coded so you could see what operation was being done that step and where it was just I was, you know, bringing it down. So for the next step, after parentheses comes exponents. I underlined it. Negative 3 squared. And I made a little thought bubble because this, I hopefully, this is happening in your head. I'm thinking negative 3 squared. Well, what that tells me, that exponent of 2, tells me that I have two negative 3's being multiplied together. Negative 3 times negative 3. And you should know that when that number is backed up to the parentheses, that means multiply. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9 because they have the same sign. So the positive 9 comes down. Now, I look for multiplying and dividing. There isn't any, so I go to addition and subtraction, and I do that in the same step, left to right. That is why I am subtracting before I am adding. I'm going left to right. 8 minus 3 is 5. Bring down my 9. 5 plus 9 is 14.